Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. This is going to be a crying video. I wasn't going to mention anything, but I feel like I'll feel better if I know others know what I'm going through. I came prepared, but I, I brought toilet paper. I prefer toilet paper over tissues. Most of you know, or at least partially know, the story between me and my husband. I am married, and my husband lives in Houston. We met when I was a kid, 14. We got married many years later, like 25 years later. He was from Houston. I've always been in Maine. When we got together, 25-something years later, I moved to Texas for three years. Then my father was sick, and I begged Andy to take me home so I could care for my father, and, and Andy did that. And he stayed here for 10 years, and he hated it, and he was drinking so much, and I wasn't anymore, and it just wasn't going good. I'm the one who brought it up that maybe he should go back to Houston and I would stay here and take care of my mother for as long as needed and we'd be together after. And it was like a way of giving him permission to leave because as many faults as he has, one thing I know is that he always wanted to take care of me. And he kept good on that. He moved. I got his paycheck all the time. I paid the bills. I paid my bills. I paid his bills. Our money was always still combined. And the first couple of years, I saw him a few times. And now I haven't seen him for three years. And he quit working in January because he was so sick. And I know he must have cancer. When he left me, he went back to smoking and still drinking and not eating. And he went to the doctor about a week ago and he was 115 pounds and he's 5'10 or 5'11. He's always been very small, but I mean, he just coughs all the time and coughs up blood. And so he called me this morning and he's in the hospital. His brother brought him in last night because he can hardly walk. And, and of course, they're doing all kinds of tests, but they told him, you know, he's pretty much probably filled with cancer and he's probably not leaving that hospital and I'm not shocked by that I can't even believe he made it to 60 years old I mean I just don't know what to do now at first I wanted to run to him and go be with him but I don't want a memory of that so he hasn't said please come because I know him too he doesn't want me to have to deal with that. I almost hope he doesn't ask me to because I won't want to say no to that. We were talking a while ago about him moving back here. He wanted to come back because he knew that he'd have me and that I would take care of him and help him until the end. But I was still all you know, saying, you can come, but I don't want you drinking, and I shouldn't have said that. The man is dying. I should have just said, come. I don't care what condition. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm ever going to, to see him again, and I'm so sick to my stomach over all this. <laughs> and, then, and then another thing. <laughs> Tigger is dead. <laughs> Tigger is the neighbor's cat who visits me every day, almost every day, and has been for six years. I loved that cat like a pet, and like he was my very own. My mother did too. And then the other night, the neighbor came over and told me that he had been run over and they had to bring him to the animal hospital in Portland and they said there was nothing they could do to save him so they had him put down and I couldn't even tell you guys I think this was like two nights ago I just the neighbor was crying so hard I never really realized how much he loved his cat. I just thought we loved him. 
And I know so many of the peanut gallery members like Tigger, too. Loved him, even. And then now, this news from my husband. And, and with all that, I'm just trying to just go on and do normal things. Like, like I came out to get milk. Well, I, my mother needs milk, and tomorrow nothing's open. And when I get home, I'm going to try to sew. I just don't know what else to do. I mean, I am at least used to not having my husband in the house. I mean, he, like I said, he left five, a little over five years ago. But we talk all the time. And when we were always on the phone, it was easy for me to just pretend that it was that 18-year-old boy that I met way back. And I was in love with him so much. Ugh. And then I could almost pretend that, you know, someday he'd snap out of it. But I knew he was never going to get well. He worked every day of his life. He was an alcoholic who never missed work. He started working in high school, and he worked all his life. And when he quit in January because he didn't feel good, I knew that this was the end. It was the beginning of the end. So, I just wanted to let you guys know this, and, um, you know, I hope you don't think it's weird if I still try to upload things, because I just want to keep my mind preoccupied. I am, uh, I'll, I'm just going to stop here for right now, okay? And I will, uh, keep you guys updated, and, um... Just thank you for being there for me. I mean, that's all I could think of is I need to cry. I don't want to be doing crying like this with my mother. I mean, she even cries. I mean, I know it was not a perfect marriage that I had by far, but I really, really do love my husband. I do. And uh, flawed or not, I'm flawed too. And he loves me. I know he does. And, uh... I was just going to go in. I'm like, hey, I forgot something. I have people right here. I just, um, I just don't know what else to say right now. I'm so afraid those people are going to ask me what's wrong. I am so sick right now with pain of heartache. <laughs> All right, I don't know where I left off, but I'm just going to say bye, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. I love you guys so much. I really do. <laughs> bye.